And hi, uh, meet me, Wesley. I'm the director of this short documentary. Um, I also wanted to shoot this film because I am in danger of becoming homeless. I live paycheck to paycheck and I don't actually earn enough to rent my own apartment. So um, I wanted to see what it was like if I really was homeless. So what contributes to poverty and the lack of job security? According to HowStuffWorks.com, the two biggest factors driving people to become homeless are poverty and a lack of affordable housing. The lack of affordable housing and the limited scale of housing assistance programs contributes to the current housing crisis and homelessness. I wanted to know how these people can be ignored. I wanted to know how you could just step over these people. <sighs> Alright, I am about to spend the night on the streets in Atlanta. I will be traveling between downtown to like the Buckhead area and I will be talking to various homeless people and or populations in, th in those areas. So, um, let's pray that I, I'm not mugged or anything. What's your name, bro? You gotta speak up a little bit. Eric. Eric, how old are you? 31. 31. Are you homeless? Yeah. How long you been homeless? Three years. How did you become homeless? Bad choices that I made in my life. When I was uh, 18, between 18 and 20, 21. So, is it like, how hard is it to be homeless, you think? It ain't hard as long as you got faith in God and you believe that he can make a way. Is as long as you have faith and patience and know that it's an experience and not a lifestyle, you'll be all right. So you don't consider this your reality? You're just saying, I'm just here right now. You planning on getting out of the streets? Uh, exactly. Are you working on that right now? Yes. Okay. What are the things that you would tell people who may be at risk of becoming homeless? You don't know, so-called have to go to college, but make sure you get a good thing going on for yourself to make it out. If you got a talent, use it. And if you have something in you that pushes you every day, like kids and whatnot, but you can tell your kids all day, but you gotta push yourself before you can yeah, push yeah. someone else. How hard is it out here being homeless, you would say? Is it like, cause, I, cause this morning it was kind of cold, bro. So what would you say during the winter time? Is the winter hard for y'all? Like how do you survive the elements? She honestly, uh, some go to jail, but me, I find places to go out and I get me a room. Oh, you get your room and everything? You said some people choose to go to jail? True. How do you go to jail, bro? You just commit a little crime to go to jail? You know, like you do, you do shit on purpose to get locked up. You spend 30 days, 20 days. You gotta think about it, jail is a safe haven for the home. Three hots in the car. They yeah. Sleep all day and day. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So I hear you gotta worry about because I just talked to somebody too. His name was T. He was like, you gotta worry about people robbing you. You gotta worry about just, you know, making sure you keep up with your stuff while you're out here on the streets. Yeah. But you said you get room, so you really don't have to worry about that too much. You feel me? Yeah, really. well, uh, if I can come up with the fire to pay. How much? Five up. Oh, so they give you a room for five bucks? Well, I go. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's why I'm out here trying to do it. Man. I feel you, bro, I feel you, I feel you. That's why I asked you to help me. Mm -hmm. That ain't for no joy, that's for getting your room. 
do you, I'm almost there. Do you think? I'm going to be doing that inside the station, so I'm going to Yeah. Jump together. Do you think most people who are who are homeless are they addicted to drugs? You think, or is other reasons why you cut? Can is some it just addicted to drugs, or some just immune? Immune means they comfortable. They comfortable with being homeless. How do how does that happen though? Easy shit, you know, a good beer and a good piece of dope and shit like that. What they want every day, as long as they got their hell song kids as I checks, believe it or not. But they smoke it up, they create a dope bed. Go ahead, go ahead. Watch how they get their check here. They old dope man 300, and they ain't got them 200 left. They can't check that to get my eight ball to crack, and then the other one. Oh, bro. I want to say something mean. So, what's the big, big thing you have to worry about, too? Like, do you feel like people look down on you for being homeless? Like how I your profile in a lot of them. When you walk in stores, security guards just pushing up just on GP. We in water right now, and you know they got these laws against panhandling and stuff like so, that. I believe in God. Like I All right. From the All right. Well, how do you feel about them having those laws that you think directly target homeless people? Like no panhandling or no no panhandling like around this area downtown. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, I don't worry about the law because God is my law, and I can't speak for everybody else. But to answer your question, it's fucked up. But for me, I believe in God. My third eye open and my veil lifted, so I, I look at life and hope it Yeah. What do you think needs to be done to assist the homeless situation? Be a more motherfucking shelter instead of being in some crappy ass Falcon Stadium. Instead of spending all that money for that state, they could have built a goddamn homeless shelter, another homeless building, cleaner and more suitable to live in. And they could have at least built some more resources to get us all How do you put the fucking thousand down? Bouncers ain't want championship forever. But I'm just giving you an example. Do you go to Peachtree Pine? Have you ever been to Peachtree Pine? Uh -uh. I'm not going back, bro. You got me fucked up. Why, bro? What's wrong with Peachtree Pine, you think? There ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just not a shelter type nigga. I got okay. all my shit stolen. I mean, I got my shit, you know, taken. And I don't do shelter, no. Plus, I get like reactions and shit. Go on to Peachtree and shit, so I don't do that no more. And they got roaches. All that shit, all that shit, I paid for that room, I love it. Black spot. A black spot, it looked like a hole in the plan. And it was us. And we said, involve us in this. Come see. That's all I say to anybody ever. Come and see. Come feel it. Feel the energy. Get to know some people. Pose for us while we paint you. You know, go up on the roof and see our organic roof garden. Look at what can happen right here in the middle of this city. To end homelessness is about inclusion. That's all. Include people who have been excluded in your planning, in your process, in your neighborhoods, because that's where they came from. It's a good day. I, I didn't eat my Wheaties either. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> it's an awesome day. You want to talk about the Olympics a little bit? You I started to talk about it. I think it's a good segue is the cleansing, right? Yes. When the Olympic bid was announced, it was the whole bid process was private in Atlanta. It was privatized. It was <clears throat> Billy and his friends, friends of Billy, FOB. The Olympic planners were a little cadre of pow powerful, they became powerful, but they were intimate friends of this person who had the Olympics as a gleam in his eye. But so did the developers. I mean, the developers wanted access to the city, and now they own it. They own it. They own the council. They own the mayor. Whoever wants to develop what they want to develop, create a belt line. Gee, what a good idea. So we can create more villages out there that are for people we designate, because only those people can afford this housing.
So let's just keep doing projects. Let's move the Brave Stadium now to Cobb County so we can cleanse um, Grant Park and the periphery of Grant Park. And um, I, I'm blanking on the name and I live there. Summerhill. Summerhill. Summerhill, historic Summerhill is being gentrified fast. All of that property is being gentrified. And so we can do that if we say the right things. You know, if St. Luke's posts on its gate, Black Lives Matter, <laughs> that excuses them for what they think about this place and what they say about this place, not on your life. Can you, can you just talk about what are some other causes of homelessness? Well, addiction is not the primary cause because most people who are addicted are up there and there and there. And so, you know, it's not primary. But if you couple it with poverty and living on the edge and being excluded from your resources or using them up, then it becomes a cause. But it isn't the primary cause. The primary cause of homelessness is the cost of housing and the level of wages that we as, as a culture and a society think are livable and they are not, not even close. So the cost of housing and the wages people earn don't meet. And as that gap separates dramatically in the last decade, and it keeps separating, and as the supposed safety net is not even full of holes, it's gone with welfare reform under Clinton. You know, that eviscerated the supports for women with children. And um, so there's a history of all of this. It's gone on in the last decade, since 74. You know, when um, there was a move to get people out of the institutions where they were remanded, if they were mentally fragile or addicted, you know, they were co-addicted or co-diagnosed. Um, all of those things that have gone on since the late seven, mid to late 70s have produced, not magically, but predictably, homelessness as we know it now. It's gotten worse incrementally as those supports have been taken away, removed. Public housing is no more in Atlanta, with the exception of some high rises. But you take away the mandated right to have housing, which we had in this country in 1949, and we had public housing that people were entitled to because veterans were coming back from the war and they were mostly Caucasian. And so public housing was developed for those folks and their housing families and stuff. So as we began to discriminate more in terms of income support and housing as a right because, you know, we were discriminating racially and the demographics of public housing changed and people were moved into cities as the white folks flew to the suburbs. All of that changed the demographics. Now they've waked up and decided, oops, we're 51% African American in Atlanta. What, what can we do to change that? <clears throat> so we're building the city up with no restraint whatsoever for the suburban folk to come back in in flocks and to say what they say in this neighborhood in meetings in front of our folks who live here too. We didn't pay all this money to have to face this. There you but go. you moved here. <laughs> yeah, but you came here. We've been here all before the all the time. And you moved in and expected to bring the sidewalks in the suburbs in here and cleanse the city. Cleanse the city? How can you call it cleansing? It's not cleansing, it's discrimination, it's prejudice, it's racism. It is racial cleansing, but I don't like that term because it doesn't make it clean. It makes it dirty and wrong and evil. So you can displace people because of the color of their skin or their ethnicity or their diagnosis. And what you've done is purge the people you need for your salvation. You just said a mouthful right there. I never saw that before. That's a good one. It is. You do. You do. We need each other to you earn do. our salvation. But God, it's not earning, it's enjoying. That's the thing. We don't get it that this is more fun than fuckheads 
no fun. Dunwoody is extra no fun. You know, I'm safer here than I am in Dunwoody. How do you feel? How do you feel right now? Like frustrated? Frustrated. What do you think is um like what makes you frustrated? It makes me frustrated like not just thinking about it, but like I'm not here. I should have to be here. I shouldn't be here. I don't know. It's not for me. Do you think it's for anybody? No. Well, some people here. Yeah. Some people is actually like they like what they do, like they pay at home all day and have no money to people who work. They just don't want to pay no bills. And I've actually heard them come out of their mouth like, you know what I'm saying? Get an apartment for what? And I can come here and sleep at night for free and eat for free. And it's just like, for real, you comfortable with somebody telling you, you know what I'm saying, when you get up, when you go to bed, when you come here, when they feed and all this other stuff, you comfortable with that? That's like being in jail with you. I ain't never been to it and I don't want to go, but that's why being in jail. You're smiling, so serious. I've, no, I've I... actually seen people like, I've actually seen a homeless dude, you know, train every day with the same story saying he just came from his probation officer, asked him for change to get on the bus. Then gave him change. She's like, oh, I don't have anything smaller than a 20. And he pulled out a ball. Like, I do, let's just keep it. I stole for a dollar. <laughs> Go get your paintbrush. Bright. Okay, so start again talking about stability. And what makes it difficult to get stability? What makes it this um, a barrier for stability for me is employment and employment has its own barrier because of child care. I can't get child care. I try to pay pay family to do it because it's way more cheaper than just sending the child to the child um, daycare center. Family is it's overly entitled. Like, I'm giving you money already. Well, can you give me money and food stuff? So, when I give you money and food stuff, I'm giving you money and I'm sending food. Like, what are you doing with the food that I'm sending you? You eating it? Yeah. It's just being undermined as a I think that's right. That bothers me the most part. Okay, I think. Yeah, come on. We ain't gonna come back up here. We ain't gonna come back up here. How you feel? Do you think the system is create, is set up for us to need all these things? Like, okay, I it's need It's set a up job. for you to need it, and it's set up for you not to be able to survive. Even Sometimes people who have it still can't survive. Like, if you got a job, you make minimum wage, seven from five, you're not doing too good. Even if you're doing full time, you're still not doing too good. You got kids, you're really not doing good. Unless you got help or more than one income. The five-year-old is is it's a girl or a boy? A boy. He's with his dad. He's with his dad. Is he in school yet? Yeah. He's in school. Yeah. What school does he go to? Dobbs. Dobbs up here. Yes. Right up here. Yes. Okay, cool. And then when he's in, so he's he went to school today, right? Yes. Okay, cool. And then does he come back here with you at night? Oh no, he goes with his dad. He's with his dad. Like until I can do better, he's with his dad. Okay. I'm my youngest son's dad because his dad died, so I'm mom um, and dad. And what do you want for the babies? I just want better. Like, I think everybody wants better for their kids, but I really want like better. Like, ugh, the world on a silver platter. That's what I want. If you could give that to him, you would? Yes. I would, but I wouldn't. I'd give it to him, but I'd make him wait for it. Like, yeah, you got the word in the city of Florida. What you gonna do for it? How hard you gonna work? Do you feel entitled, or do you feel like you gotta earn it? On a day-to-day, -day, like, what do you... Cause, because you bounce back, like, bounce in and out of, like, 
living with a family member or like living with a friend, living at a homeless shelter, how, like, what are you thinking about on a daily basis? Mm. I'm one of those people who put waddles and self pity, like, why? Uh, what did I do? Why does the universe hate me? Who did I piss off for karma just be like this? <laughs> Do you really think you you think the universe is out to get you? No, I know the universe is about to get me, but it's just, you know, you get stuck in one of those moods, it's like a funk. Then I have this little thing, like, it was a joke at first, but then I started thinking about it, see, it's like I'm a believer in low self-esteem, because only people with high self-esteem are sociopaths, criminals, movie stars, or just plain assholes. <laughs> But I would say economic drivers tend to be the most important ones. That okay. is, people just aren't simply making enough money to maintain a, a reasonable living facilities. Um, unfortunately, we don't give a lot of people a lot of breaks um, in that regard. So right. when people lose their jobs, for example, um, we don't have great unemployment and benefits. And sometimes it's actually hard just to maintain the unemployment benefits. So there's not a way to hold on to one's living situation. Um, so there's really quite a few pathways, but they are sort of uh, interwoven into the economic aspects. It's just simply people don't have enough money to to pay, pay for stuff. So. Yeah. So, um, it, like, how does one actually really? How do you actually classify homeless? Is it is it just um, like uh, not having a specific place of residence on a you know like not having a your own home or name on a lease or anything like that is or how do you actually classify homes? Well, um, actually there's a that's actually kind of interesting sort of source of debate actually mm -hmm. um, but um, we know there's actually quite a variety of ways to be homeless um, the classical way is to think about it in terms of the way the Department of Housing and Urban Development thinks about housing or homeless that is people who don't have a residence of their own that they're not on the lease they don't own anything but then or they're living and um, they're living on the street or then they're living in a shelter um, so that's kind of the classical definition of, of homeless individuals. Um, in our work on homeless youth, though, we find that about half of the young people who are homeless um, uh, are actually um, couch surfing or sofa surfing. They're going from one friend's to another's couch, literally. And so they'll do that. So they might have a few weeks where they're actually on the streets. They might make a new friend for a while, and they stay in their house for a while, but then they you know, wear out their welcome, then they move back on the streets again. So they're kind of this sort of revolving door process. Okay. Like, um, I guess, how does Atlanta actually compare nationally with the... Um as far as statistics go with the rest of the country as far as homelessness goes? Well, I mean, Atlanta, like most urban areas, has a pretty significant problem with homelessness, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, Atlanta might have um, an edge um, during per certain times of the year. Homeless people do move around. And so, for example, we know that there's some migration from the north to the south during the winter months. Oh. So it might swell during, uh, you know, January or February when things are pretty cold up north. People might actually find a way to migrate to the south. Okay. And like, uh, is there any kind of like, what kind of preventative support is there um, as far as like at risk individuals, like in the, in the spe specifically in this state, in this, in Atlanta I think actually area? The South, generally in Georgia and Atlanta, <clears throat> probably are a little behind the ball in terms of uh, where some other states are in terms of do prevention. Um, um, so a lot of places have actually looked into things like, um, emergency rental assistance, emergency tenant assistance, um, trying to help people before they actually become homeless. Um, unfortunately, we invest more resources on helping people after they become homeless, not necessarily preventing them from becoming homeless. Okay. Um, there's actually been a lot of discussion about that just very recently, about how do we do a better job of that. But part of it is because it's actually... Uh, um, ironically, there's a perception that it costs a lot of money to prevent homelessness and to deal with the homeless issue. Um, I think what we have uh, been learning over the last two decades of research is that actually the cost of homelessness to society generally far exceeds what we would actually need to actually um, spend money on prevention. Wow. 
when you think about it, people who are homeless um, will have you know, significant health problems, will call ambulances, police will have to be um, called to sort of basically move them from one place to another. They don't really have other options. They're, uh, um, in, in some place, people's minds, a public nuisance. Um, so that whole discussion happens. But it's interesting. We don't think about the indirect costs right. on the society. And actually, it might actually be cheaper if we actually... Actually help people out. Actually, um, there's this model called Housing First, um, which is a really interesting model. But, you know, we have a lot of abandoned apartment buildings and just buildings in general. What if we were just to sort of rehab them, put them up, Pay, take people who are homeless, give them a home uh, free of charge for a while. Right. Um, that might actually solve multiple issues um, for society and help the person who's homeless uh, in a more direct uh, way than certainly the way that we're doing it right now. Um, and, the, and there's a lot of evidence now to that effect. But looking a little further upstream, one of the questions that's now being discussed, and I'm not part of those conversations, there's other people who are, but looking at the whole issue of affordable housing. Um, do people, I mean, uh, you know, land, downtown Atlanta is a great example, and even Midtown, for example, you know, there's a lot of building going on. But these apartment buildings are largely um, more condo buildings are being built, or things, places that um, an more average person certainly couldn't afford. Right. There are a lot of people downtown and in Midtown, for example, that simply can't afford to live in those areas, and what's happening is they're tearing down lower cost housing and replacing it with much higher cost housing. Like so regentrify which is, regentrification which type is, thing. You know, right. um, the developers like to call it gentrification. It's sort of trying to take old blood, what they sort of, you know, um, bad neighborhoods and turn them into great neighborhoods. And that sort of, uh, it challenges, creates all the problem because then it displaces the people who were there. And so what you're seeing is a bunch of, um, as it, parts of Atlanta are gentrifying, then those people are being displaced. Right. A big concern on the west side, for example, is the whole discussion about the new park um, that's being displayed, that they're talking about building around the quarry. You know, there's a lot of low-income housing in that area. Um, some people who've lived there for generations have very, um, not, not what we might think of as, you know, middle-class homes, but are lower-class or lower-income homes that might actually end up getting demolished um, or certainly pushed out because they can't afford as the prices go up when they build the new park. Um, and then all those new condo buildings come up, the tax base changes, and so people who are living on the margins um, don't have any option but actually to move. Wow. And how do you feel personally about the, you know, this specific situation? Well, I think it's a case of, uh, to me it's tragic um, on so many levels. Um, I think what it is is, you know, in the uh, zealous pursuit of trying to make Atlanta a great place to live, um, more middle class, more upper middle class homes, uh, we have to sort of uh, remember that we have a responsibility to those who don't have that kind of income. And I think the question is, is can we figure out a way to develop a city in a way that balances everybody's needs? It's 6 o'clock in the morning, my camera died on me, I'm using a cell phone to record this video. I'm using a, a cell phone to record this video. I've been on the streets the whole night, currently I'm under a bridge, I spent about like 15 minutes just chilling underneath the bridge, kind of sad over here. I like, I guess, the Martyr train stations. Uh, I had to wait for my um, actual camera battery to charge. So I'm recording on this cell phone. Um, I have been kicked out of... I was kicked out of two um places this evening i was kicked out of a restaurant for using their restroom for too long um they saw me with this bag and with a tripod and um they kicked me out oh lordy <laughs> uh the second time i was kicked out i went to uh actually i went to a i had to go number two so I stopped at a uh, adult novelty store. I was forced to buy a condom for one dollar um, to use their facilities. Um, I took too long, I guess. 
and uh, the dude who um, owns the establishment, he kicked me out as well. Um, I'm saying all this to say, I'm um, entering Buckhead. You see that? But I said all that to say, um, I, I experienced just a portion this evening, this early morning, of what someone who's homeless in Atlanta experiences on a daily basis. Do you think that's the main reason why people become homeless due to like just financial situations? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the economy hasn't really been that great. But like I said, when I got here in '96, the economy was booming. I'm talking just Atlanta. I don't know about anywhere else. Uh -huh. But the economy was booming here, and it fell off. So, so how do people? Hey. I know there are a lot of resources for people who are homeless. How do people stay homeless, do you, you think? Or do people, like, is it hard to, when, once you are homeless, is it hard to get out of that type of situation? Like, what are the struggles, you would say? Okay. First of all, in my case, I don't have any family anywhere near Georgia. Okay. Uh, you know, your family is very important because you Know, your blood family, they they will help you. Mm -hmm. um, being a man, it's even harder. You know, uh, I don't want to blame it on a, a racial issue. I don't want to blame it on anything. Uh, uh, I was talking to. Where's the band to get on the Sir. Yeah. Pay five dollars to get on camera, but let me finish up with yeah, him first. Yeah, come on, Carl. Let me finish up with him. Man, man. man, go ahead. Yeah, let me thank you. Oh, uh, so I feel bad for me because I'm not able to do anything. I can't work. You know, uh, so, a lot of things I can't do. So, what do you think can help your situation then? Or what do you think can help the ho the homeless situation in Atlanta overall? What, what solutions do you see to it? I don't know, bro. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, sun will be up in a minute, thank God. Yeah. So I can uh, tough it out till the sun gets up. <laughs> and I'll take it from there. I don't I don't really go to, to me. I don't go anywhere. So, so what's a typical day like? Like, do you panhandle or do you... Yeah. Okay. I don't hold the sign. I don't sell dope. You know, I'll panhandle. You're a godsend because at least you're honest. You're doing, the, you know, you're doing it the right way. How do? How much money do you think you can make panhandling a day, like on average? Today's Saturday, probably about fifteen dollars. Okay. Okay. Um. Do you think most people who are homeless panhandle, or do they have like other means, like other other means of income? Some work. Uh, it depends on what your skill is. Okay. All right. Because everyone is different. You're right. Everyone is different. Like in every situation is different. The uh, trouble that I have out here is finding uh, a restroom to go to the bathroom. Okay. That's the big, that's my biggest problem. That, that was a part of my experiment because it was like, I'm not going home tonight. I'm not, when I'm home, I can use the restroom. I can't do that out here though because I don't have a restroom. So like you were just saying, that that's one of the big, big things you have to worry about. Like, so personal hygiene, like just taking a shower, just uh, defecating, right. just stuff like that. Like, uh, like that's. These are human things that we like. We need to do, and it's and, and being homeless makes makes that a hard, hard, hard thing. Do you think? How do you handle that internally? 
Well, I mean, in um, in Atlanta, I'm sure around the country or whatever, being in public, they consider that a sex charge. Uh, charge but yeah. I do it anyway. Now, as far as defecating, I try, you know, to keep like. Whatever you give me. Yeah. So if I really have to take a shit, I, maybe they'll let me in Dunkin' Donuts. That's the only place open now. Yeah. This, um, across the street, Chili's, they're real nice about it. Okay. Okay. They are. I want my people to have what everyone else has. A nice, clean, safe home. My heart aches when I see any person in this predicament. I want to help them all, but I know I can't. But what I can do is inform the masses and ask them to advocate. We need to engage our lawmakers, like the ones that declined or neglected my request for this documentary. We need to encourage a discourse that encourages low housing options for all.